Welcome back to Horizon 4. It's been a while. It's been actually like a week or two since by the game. For the most part. Except like an hour ago when I got this car. That I used to kind of hate before it released. Like I saw the renderings and all that. And when, it, when the car got revealed. And it was like. That is ugly. Because the 488 is not the worst car ever like it looks fairly good i just always thought this thing looked weird but the more i like studied it and uh, all of that the more i fell in love with it it's it looks ridiculous in my mind it's it's really good it looks aggressive it looks like a race car in a sense except that it should have been a bit wider, but might, for all I know, actually be a bit wider than normal 488. And the front end there that scoops up air and creates downforce, carbon wheels, like essentially this third company to use carbon wheels in a production car, Koenigsegg and Mus and Ford have used it on the GT350R and of course the GT. But the rear end of this is the best looking Ferrari of all time in my mind. Even the F40. The F40 is awesome. It's old school and all that, but this with the diffuser and the big exhaust pipes and the led lights look really cool and essentially the rear spoiler i would call it it's not a wing it's spoiler and also these carbon fiber wheels in my mind look fairly good also bucket seats carbon doors thank god this has the carbon interior package because it's every piece that should have it they might be standard i don't know but carbon doors, just like Ferraris, and I think even F40 had like carbon or Kevlar door door panels. So, I always liked this interior in Ferraris. Ever since the 458, like, I really liked this, this layout and the steering wheel and the paddles. I just liked it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. And then... What? Also, like, if you don't have a Ferrari and you don't have the carbon shift lights, well, if you have a Ferrari and you don't have the carbon shift lights, you're doing something wrong, because it needs it. The response, like, it goes from idling to, like, 8,000 RPM. It feels and sounds almost as fast as the LFA. I have a turbo boost gauge on the left. The one thing I don't like is the speedometer. It doesn't really matter too much when you're like having fun and on track. Always abide by the laws of the road. Uh, but it's never been my favorite. Oh, the carbon buckets, like. They're so cool, and they're of course rec and they're reclinable, not fixed back. But it looks so good. Also, Ferrari V8 just looks cool with the big, tall intake manifold and the intakes. I'm guessing this has or oh, is an intake for both cooling and the actual air. Or like, no, that looks, I'm not sure actually, but let's, anyway, let's take it for a drive and see how it feels. Will it be more nimble and stuff like that? More nimble and agile? 
It sounds so loud. It starts up and then... Oh, the rear end of it. That ass. That ass though. It looks really good. It's raining, sadly. Let's turn off the clutch because I used an old race car. I used Ford GT Mark II when I unlocked this car, so. It looks so good. The rear end does look like a lot. Not the rear end, but the front end. It looks a lot longer than the... Looks like the overhang is a lot larger than... On the normal 458. Also, I don't think... Well, in, in the game, this thing doesn't have boost by gear, which the normal 458 does. So, like, essentially, limited wheel spin. But this thing essentially has as much power as the 720S. And the general tone of this engine is really, really good. Also, the special Brembo six-piston rear brakes with an included parking brake. I always like the look of them. Also, they're exclusive to Ferrari. Yeah. This thing should have wrote to 9,000 RPM. It hooks second. I'm surprised. It's very stable. It's very stable at high speed. Definitely has some functioning downforce. Also shifting at 8,000 RPM. I do feel robbed of 1,000. Because the engine just sounds sweeter and sweeter the higher the RPM in my mind. And it sounds kind of good at nine. It hooks. Like, of course you can roast first. But it doesn't have too much torque which I kind of like because it doesn't just blaze the tires off but if you floor it in second gear it always hooks then again it only has like 567 pound feet of torque but let's floor it for 4000 rpm It's, it's, it doesn't get squirrely, it just hooks and goes, and it's stable on corners. I swear to you, when I put turbos on this thing, upgraded turbos and maybe camshaft, this thing will not hook like this. It's so easy to drive. And it's fun to drive too. It's 
stable around corners and kind of hard to get sideways. Like the downforce and just general grip is there. There, I just floored it going into the corner. It stepped down, but of course it would. 720 horsepower. But some speed dual clutch Ferrari and Porsche hands now makes the best dual clutch transmission. Transmissions, they're great. But the churn in. Let's slow down, 140, turn in. And the car just, it, it sticks. I didn't expect it, because I felt like last time I drove the 48A, like, there was a certain connection missing. Because, uh, like, it didn't really always do what you wanted to, I felt like. It roasted the tires. And had, like, not that great of a turn in. But this thing, straight into the corner. Easy to manage power out of the corner. It's not going to be like that after I'm done with it, but... Like, it has some... off-throttle... corner entry rotation, but it's... it's not uncontrollable. It's not like you turn in, lift off the ball, and things spins around. Brakes work well. I did go off road. I, bl I blame myself, not the car. It does not like being sideways, though. Even with 700 horsepower, this thing is hard to get sideways. It's because of the torque, but if you really throw it in and throw the weight in, it will it will let go. But eh. driving it like how it's supposed to be, and yeah, like it, I'm surprised. I didn't I didn't expect it to be this good. To be honest. The Fibman is fairly good. I will kind of have to lower the car first before I make a final judgment. It only has 305s and it hooks like that. Holy crap. That's... Okay, it's a race tire. So that's why it feels so good. The diffuser... It's like it doesn't give me a great look at it. <laughs> Just kind of sucks, but like, yeah. The wing looks cool, but the the car the thing that makes this rear end is the spoiler and the diffuser. It looks so great. I've said that like a million times now, but it just looks great. We can get the engine out of the. F12, F50, I mean, uh, GT, or the engine out of the FXXK, I think, because that is over a thousand. So, hmm, you can get a lot of power out of it, but eh, I don't know. Kind of like the sound of this V8, so I'm going to stick with it. Uh, oh, just look at the drop, though. That's needed. 
I don't know if I want to, but it's like weight reduction. <laughs> so, like, I don't always like doing anti roll bars because I feel like it kind of upsets the balance of the car a lot of the time. So, I don't always like to do it. But even with a simple modification, like change of the camshaft and exhaust intake, like this thing already makes like 100 more horsepower. I want to do turbo, that's going to be full. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it yet. But I'm um, okay, that gives it a lot of power 30 horsepower from just that. Can you give me a round number? Like everything gives it so much. <laughs> it's always like something with three or a one. You know what? Let's do heads too and just like leave it at 860 horsepower. This is way too much. It's literally way too much. This is gonna be horrible to drop. I just know it. Can't tune the arrow because it doesn't really have too much tunable arrow. Um. Just leave it like this. I don't really care that much. But now I need to change the. Now that the car is lower, I kind of have a feeling I could judge the. Okay, yeah, definitely all the way out. And all the way out. Yeah, let's leave it like that. Oh, it looks so good now. I'm gonna leave the car in front of wheels because they look sick. They look flippin' awesome. But I don't know if they're made by Carbon, Carbon Revolution. Like with Ford. Or it, if Ferrari makes the wheels themselves. Okay, the red line increased by 1500 RPM. See that? Like, it was... Spins all the way through second. Oh, yeah, it's a lot faster. But does it still have the balance? I don't know. It's a lot faster. It does hook second. As long as you're at at least 50 miles per hour. If you're at like 50, it hooks. Let's start at trying 40. It spins at 40. Start like 45. It spins. So is it the secret 50 roll? Yes, secret is 50 roll. This thing hooks and it goes in second gear. The camshafts really gave the engine what I wanted in terms of sound. Because it gives that, that extra up top. Some engines, I don't like the RPM noise. This thing, I love it. Revs, revs, revs. Honda and Ferrari. <laughs> the way, uh, those, those always sound better with revs. So what's like the cornering on this now? If 
like 1.2, 1.3, something like that. Turn low run. It sounded glorious. Oh my god. I think this actually... Personally... This thing is probably one of the cars that I'm going to just drive around with. Just because it's fun to drive and it's fast. It handles well. It sounds great. After like 200, it kind of slows down. Fifty roll. Oh my god. I like this. I like it a lot. I like it way too much. I will do a fully built engine. It's gonna make like a thousand horsepower and it's gonna be ridiculous and it's gonna roast tires for way too long. I know it. Another 30, another 24, I already have that, the things I need are that and that. Almost 1100 horsepower. Is this going to be unusable? Most likely, unless I put all-wheel drive on it, but I don't want to. Because <laughs> that's going to just ruin the handling of it. It's gonna hook in third if you feather it. It's way too fast now. These and brakes. Be careful on the throttle though. Kind of wish I had more downforce. I could put a wing and a splitter on it. Like it, it's like kind of hooked in third, but I just got barely a bit sideways and a bump, and it just rose to tires like that. Spinning up to like 115. Oh. That did not happen. Look at that! What have I done with this beautiful car? It's ridiculous. Floor it. Why? And it's boost at like 3000 RPM. It has like a lot more torque, like 200 more foot pounds. Actually it has over 800. I've had more of a torque gain than a horsepower gain, I feel like. At least like in terms of no noticeability, if that is even a word. You notice the torque a lot more. It's kind of fun, because it's, it's just hard, it's hardest to drive and more exciting that way. But you have to really focus. 
or else. Sorry, Audi. Or else this thing will screw you over. But stay. Stay aware of what you're doing and what the car is doing, and this is probably a really quick car with the right tune, with downforce. But is it the fastest S2 car? Realistically, you can get X class with like 1500 horsepower with. Uh, do the F50 swap, put twin turbos, that thing makes like 12, 1300, I don't even remember, 1500 horsepower. Uh, it's gonna ha not have torque, but it's gonna rev to the moon and all that. So it's gonna be fairly easy to drive, especially if you put all the drive on it. And um, all the drive down for is Twin turbo V12 racing V12, and this thing is gonna be a monster. A ridiculous monster. So, I do kind of want to get a one race. A race that I most likely I've probably done most of them, to be honest. Mm, I feel like this would be cool, but. Eh. I've done it so many times. Eh. It's a shorty race. Let's do this one. It was kind of the closest, and yeah. Track choice, summer. Yeah, like. Almost 1100 horsepower, or 1089, 818 pound feet of torque. That's a lot. Also, this thing weighs 2800 pounds. Actually, this thing is lighter. E92 is lighter than a Ferrari. <laughs> Actually, is it? Yeah, it's like, uh, actually, yes, it is a few pounds lighter. Um, any stock cars? This the six hundred LT is lighter. Um, overall, but a stock. GT3 RS is also heavier. So, yeah. But, does a four row look this great? Uh, not really. This is probably one of the best looking cars of this, of this, of 2019, to be honest. Again, I used to hate it. I thought it looked ugly and all that, but it grew on me. Not all yeah, it grew on me and it's functionality inspired, it's all a function and feather of all it will hook. Got bumped. That sucks. I'm on that like high, highly skilled. Though. That's probably why I'm catching them so easily and driving like shit. So the thing no longer has the uh, high speed mid corner stability, high speed on throttle mid corner stability.
because it just has so much more power. It's now sketchy to drive. I will probably just turn on the power, to be honest, after this video and make a drivable again. Because driving it at a thousand horse, eleven hundred horsepower. It's not as much fun. Personally, at least. It's so... much harder to drive. It doesn't have that easy, easy driving that I had stock. Don't get me wrong, I will up, up the power from stock, but... not all the way. At super high speed, it does well. Oh, that's, that's a good side profile. Oh, oh that's... Uh, I feel like I've been moaning a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Last like two minutes, but just because uh, could have lost when it comes to this car, it's just it's special. It's very special, I think. But that's gonna be it for the 488 pista, or the pista de resistance. As the Fortathon thing was called, but yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, and yeah, thanks for watching. Like, uh, like, and subscribe. Yes, yes, very much. And uh, see you guys next time. Goodbye.